and Morty is one of my favourite modern sci-fi shows and I've recently binged season 6 on Netflix and because I just cannot turn off my astrophysics brain while I'm watching it, I end up overthinking things. As usual. <laughs> Now it's worth stating that while Rick and Morty definitely leans more to the fiction side of science fiction, it does incorporate some clever science ideas into the plot. And one of the main themes explored in Rick and Morty is the idea of a multiverse or parallel universes, right? That there are many different universes and the characters can jump between them. And this is not like unique to Rick and Morty, right? It joins many sci-fi and fantasy shows that all employ the idea of a multiverse. But the thing is the multiverse is still just that an idea, right? In science, it's completely hypothetical still. It's just maths on a page that we don't have any observational evidence for. And the thing that you tend to find is that the multiverse is kind of like Marmite amongst physicists. It really divides people. So the likes of Stephen Hawking, for example, he was a real advocate for the multiverse, but his main collaborator, Roger Penrose, was really skeptical. Now there's been a lot of different hypotheses and ideas raised to describe the concept of a multiverse, you know, the different maths that you use and the different theories that you derive it from like over the years. And there's been lots of different ways of classifying those different types of multiverse over the years as well with the likes of Max Tegmark's four different types and Brian Greene with his nine different types. But they tend to all boil down to two main overarching types of multiverses either the quantum mechanics many worlds interpretation. Do you guys just put the word quantum in front of everything? Or bubble universes. And what's cool is that in Rick and Morty, the events that happen in the show make it obvious like which version of the multiverse holds true like in Rick and Morty canon. But before we get to which one of those it actually is, I know what you're thinking. I want to watch Rick and Morty, but it's not available in my country. Well, what if there was something that could help with that and keep you safe online? Well, that's exactly what a VPN does, which is handy because this video is sponsored by Surfshark. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and it's essentially a middleman between your computer and the scary internet, which means your private information, your location, and what you're doing is all hidden from anybody who happens to be snooping. Surfshark is crucial for me as an academic because I'm always working on public Wi-Fi networks, whether that's in my office, or in the university library or when I'm traveling for work. It means that no one can snoop on that unreleased research paper that I'm writing or on my credit card info. Plus Surfshark allows you to change your virtual location to any country in the world, which means you can then access the different content libraries available in other countries on streaming services. Plus if you're anything like me with far too many devices, then you'll also love the fact that Surfshark offer unlimited devices on just one subscription. Look, there's no no risk in trying Surfshark. They have a 30 day money back guarantee. So try them out today. And if you use the promo code Dr. Becky or click on the link in the video description below, you'll get an additional six months free on your subscription, which is an incredible deal. So thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to chatting about this idea of the multiverse because the history around the idea of the multiverse is really interesting because you can find references to sort of the concept of many worlds as far back as like Greek philosophers. But the earliest sort of modern scientific musing on the idea was triggered by the breakthroughs in quantum physics in the late 19th and early 20th century. And it gained more traction in the 1950s around the time of Erwin Schrodinger of cat in the box fame, more on that later, which really built the foundation for this many worlds interpretation. Then in the 1980s, when people started thinking about the very early days of the universe's history in terms of like the cosmology and the origin and evolution of the universe is when we then started to see this idea of a bubble universe come through. So let's go chronologically and start with quantum mechanics many worlds interpretation of the multiverse. Now quantum mechanics is one of the pillars of modern physics. It essentially explains a lot of the observations we've made on the behavior of very small particles, things like atoms, but also the particles that make up atoms like electrons and protons that we call subatomic particles. And the thing is their behavior is incredibly weird. Nothing like what we're used to seeing like in the everyday world around us. 
And one of the most difficult things to wrap your head around when it comes to quantum mechanics is the idea that two opposing things can be true at the same time. So this is a classic case of Schrodinger's cat. A thought experiment where Schrodinger said, imagine you put a cat in a closed box with a flask of poisonous gas that could get broken at any moment if a random radioactive event occurs. With the box closed, you have no way of knowing if the flask got broken or not, and therefore you have no way of knowing if the cat is alive or dead. While the box is closed, both scenarios are true. The cat is both alive and dead at the same time time. It's what we call superposition. If you like, you can think about it as like probabilities. Both events are equally likely. And it's through probabilities that we explain this behaviour of subatomic particles. For example, you might remember doing the double slit experiment at school, where you send a beam of electrons at a wall with two slits in it. If the electrons behaved, you know, like we're used to seeing in sort of the macro world around us, right, you'd think, okay, the electrons will pick one slit, they'll go through that and appear out on the other side. But that's not what happens. Instead, it's equally likely that the electrons will go through either slit and so both scenarios are true. The electrons go through both slits at the same time and then interfere with themselves on the other side and give us this weird pattern. And if you think about what that means, essentially the electrons were in two places at once. So if subatomic particles can be in two places at once, then what's to say that larger things can't be in two places at once? Like an atom, or a grain of dust, or an entire human, or an entire universe. It was the physicist Hugh Everett that actually ran the maths for this and found that yes, this can happen, but what you end up with is two separate universes existing that are not aware of each other. A parallel universe where the other version of events is happening at the same time. And if you stop and think about this, what it means is that if an event is physically possible, no matter how improbable it is, there is, hypothetically speaking, according to quantum mechanics, another universe where that event is playing out in. And then if you stop to think about all of the different random events that are happening that could go one of two or three or four, how many different ways around you, it means there is an infinite number of universes all playing out simultaneously in an infinite number of dimensions. Hence the name many worlds. Although I think the use of the word many there is a huge understatement. Anyway, that was quantum mechanics's version of the multiverse, the many worlds interpretation. What about the other interpretation of the multiverse, the idea of bubble universes? Now this all falls out of the maths behind a concept known as inflation. And inflation is the idea that very early in the universe's lifetime, the universe expanded at an exponential rate increasing in size by a factor of a hundred trillion trillion in just a trillion trillion trillionth of a second. Now technically inflation is unproven unlike you know sort of quantum mechanics which it really is one of the main pillars of modern physics but we do need inflation in the big bang theory to explain why the universe is both homogeneous and isotropic i.e. it looks the same in all directions and the material, the matter in the universe is evenly distributed. So inflation essentially smoothed out the universe. You, know, you took the very dense early universe with lots of these little random fluctuations and then spread them out over a huge area thanks to the rapid growth. The indirect evidence that we have for inflation comes from looking at the cosmic microwave background. But technically we have no direct evidence despite the fact that it is this key part of our best model of the universe. And the other thing is, we also don't know why inflation stopped. Why did the universe stop expanding at such an incredible rate? Well, if you run the maths, one idea that pops out is that inflation didn't stop everywhere in the universe at the same time. 
What if inflation stopped in just one small part of the universe, which meant that like, you know, all the matter could come together and form galaxies and everything we see around us in the universe today, but in a bubble. And around that, inflation is still happening with this exponential growth. And then perhaps you also have other places where inflation stopped with other bubbles forming in the universe and they all become sort of mini universes like our own, but still separate from each other. And the really fun thing about this idea from a scientific perspective is that if this was the case, then you should be able to find observational evidence for it. Say there is a bubble universe next to ours, that should leave an imprint on the cosmic microwave background. Albeit it would be very difficult to spot, so safe to say we haven't found anything of the sort with our current observatories that we have that are designed to look at the cosmic microwave background, but you know, never say never. So those are the two main concepts in physics for a multiverse. And you get some sort of variations on these ideas, you know, some people say that like in another bubble universe, for example, like the physical constants, like the strength of gravity might be different and that's technically a different type of multiverse. But it, essentially they all boil down to these two different types. And if we think about what this means in terms of humans or characters in a sci-fi show, it means there are other versions of the same characters in different universes. We see this in Rick and Morty, we see it in the Marvel films, in Into the Spider-Verse, and in Everything Everywhere All at Once. So what does it mean to have a different version of yourself, a, a doppelganger if you will, in these two different ways of thinking about the multiverse? Well, in the bubble universe scenario, your doppelganger is just somewhere else in three-dimensional space, just a really, 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 really long way away in a different bubble entirely. The physicist Max Tegmark actually calculates it as 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 29 meters away, which is a one with then 100,000 trillion trillion zeros written after it meters away. Whereas in the quantum mechanics, many worlds interpretation of the multiverse, your doppelganger is in another dimension entirely, one of an infinite number of dimensions that these infinite number of universes can be found in. And I feel like at this point, I should stress again that in terms of the science, the multiverse is still completely hypothetical under our current understanding of physics. It is impossible to travel to a different dimension or a different multiverse. But having said that, let's have a bit of fun now because which of the multiverse concepts holds in the canon of Rick and Morty if the show even abides by the concept of canon? <laughs> well, the portal gun is described first as being a device for teleportation around the universe. But then as you watch the show, it becomes clear that it allows for interdimensional travel as well. So technically, both multiverse interpretations could be explored in Rick and Morty if the portal gun has enough power to transport a person 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 29 meters away. Which, because I started overthinking this, I looked into it and looked at when Rick Prime actually first describes his invention of the portal gun, he says, Suddenly you're able to travel the whole galaxy in Galaxy, not universe. So perhaps the portal gun is limited to how far it can transport people in a single universe. Maybe there's a finite amount of energy that you can get from the portal fluid that fuels the portal gun. You know, if the portal gun's range is limited to just hops around the galaxy, then that's going to be, you know, a limit to the distance of around about 100,000 light years, which is, you know, in terms of meters, it's a one with 21 zeros after it, not the one with a hundred thousand trillion trillion zeros after it meters that you'd need to hop to a brand new bubble universe. So with that in mind, and with the very obvious interdimensional travel that happens in Rick and Morty, it seems like the show has only ever explored the quantum mechanics many worlds interpretation of the multiverse and not the bubble universe interpretation. In fact, thinking about it, I don't know any other sci-fi, whether that's a show or a film or a book or a game that explores this bubble universe idea 
of the multiverse. It's always just the many worlds interpretation that I can think of. But if you do know any that spring to mind that sound like bubble universes instead, let me know down in the comments because I'd be so interested in seeing what a writer did with that concept, you know, and played around with this different idea of the multiverse. Now, if we're being really picky on the science here in Rick and Morty, like the versions of the characters from the other multiverses, the other dimensions, they have the same personalities despite having different lived experiences because of how their universes differ. So even though in like one universe, dogs might rule over humans or people have hamsters up their butts. The, I haven't made this up. These are actually Rick and Morty universes. Like the fact that people still have the same personalities is where things start to get very unrealistic because of the concept of like nature versus nurture in science as well. I mean, you can make the same critique of everything everywhere all at once, right? For the same reason. Evelyn is not gonna be the same person in the martial arts movie star universe as she is in her own. She'll have a completely different personality. And of course, same argument for the rocks universe as well. So if instead we were trying to stick as close as we could to our current, you know, scientific understanding of, you know, the quantum mechanics, many worlds interpretation of the multiverse, you know, in a show, then I think the show that does this best isn't even a sci-fi and it's community in the remedial chaos theory episode where they throw a die to decide who goes to answer the door downstairs to collect the pizza delivery. And with each of the six random ways that the die could land, you know, these events that are equally likely. Just so you know, Jeff, you were not creating six different timelines. Of course I am, my bad. You get these six different branching universes, including the brilliant long running gag in the show of the darkest timeline. It really works and plays into that probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics and it does it so well. Same as for the movie, like sliding doors with Gwyneth Paltrow as well, where her character either does or doesn't make the train. It's also how I interpreted Matt Haig's The Midnight Library when I read it. The library is the multiverse and each book is a different universe in which Nora made a different choice, a different set of events happened that created a branching universe. You know, if there's other examples of shows, books or films that I've missed talking about that play around with this idea of the multiverse, let me know down in the comments below, especially, you know, which of these interpretations they chose and if you think they did a good job of it after watching this video. This episode was also inspired by a recent episode of the Supermassive podcast, which is an astronomy podcast that I host for the Royal Astronomical Society, where we chatted to both Andrew Ponson and Katie Mack. So if you want more of a deep dive into this concept, especially the idea that we could also all be living in a simulated universe, one of many simulated universe, then check that podcast out. I'll, I'll link it in the video description down below for you. Obviously this video was just a bit of fun. It's what I like to call my Trojan horse of science education. It was just an excuse for me to teach you a little bit of physics. Surprise! <laughs> but there will be a lot of people in the comments who be very loud, who did not get that fact at all and thought this whole video was entirely pointless because they thought it was some sort of scientific research paper? Some sort of critique? No, I know that science fiction has to veer from the science to be science fiction. Well, that's the point. And you know they won't have watched all the way to the end, so they won't have seen me taking the mick out of them now. So join me if you made it this far in laughing at all those people. <laughs> and just remember, they're probably from the darkest timeline anyway. Don't have any observational evidence for. That's really annoying me. Just this tiny piece of fluff. Get it. And Brian Green with his nine types, but essentially they all boil down to, boil down? Isn't that like an American word to mean like oven, bake or grill? I'm never entirely sure when I read it in a recipe, like broil this, I'm like, uh, pass. <laughs> like, do I put it in an oven with a load of water so it sort of boil cooks? I don't know. <laughs> I wonder if you could just like, if it means the same thing, to boil down something or to broil down. Maybe I could have got away with it, no one would have noticed. <laughs> is in the Marvel films, it's in Into the Spider-Verse, it's in Everything Everywhere All at Once. I always wanna say like everything everywhere and then like every time or something. I feel like it should be another every. And it bugs me that it's not another every. And I feel like they could have, you know, thought about it longer and figured it out. <laughs> I'm gonna get flack, aren't I? Cause I haven't talked about like Star Trek and they'd be like, have you made a video about sci-fi without talking about Star Trek, 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 Trek. <laughs> Sorry, that was tricky. I can't, <laughs> what would you say?